like to <coughs> talk a little bit about uh, what I do, um, which I, I'm doing my best. I've just still got a voice. Well, I don't have a voice. I don't usually speak like this. <coughs> I'm trying to save some voice for later on this afternoon uh, when we're going to have a, a workshop about hemp innovation, which is very much related to what we just heard about um, just now in the workshop, putting, putting everything together. So. Um, so when people usually ask me what I do and what I get involved with, I usually talk about the food production and, and the story that we heard yesterday um, in, in my workshop there. But when I hear and get involved with um, a small project, small workshop that we just, just have experienced, I realize actually that's, that's really what I do. Um, I, I come and I find, I meet a person here at a conference, I, I get a technology here. I see something on television and I find the person that's running this. I meet a politician or go and invite someone here. And then I rearrange these things, these pieces, into a picture that can fit and, and solve and work around the pitfalls. And I create these pictures and I create these visions of what I see as solutions. And as was explained to us very clearly by Esther, these solutions are all related very clearly to, must be related very clearly to what the public wants, what is the public's demand. And that's not always so easy, because we always think, ah, oh, everyone wants this. But really, do we know everyone? Do we know everyone in our own country, let alone in the world, let alone in our town? There's different things. I don't know what you want. I don't know what you want. And we have different needs. And it doesn't mean that there's one right way or one wrong way. But what I always strive to do, for the best of my ability, is to find people and meet with people with different ideas, different perspectives, from different places, different cultures, different needs, different wants. And find something that is the same. You know, Many things are different, but there's always some things that are the same. That's part of the reason I chose working with hemp foods, because we all need to eat, nearly all of us in the world, most of us. There are breatharians, I have met them, they do survive on the air and energy vibrations, but there are a few people that, that survive on the air. So we all, need, we all need food, we all need housing, we all need somewhere to live. And um, if I was an octopus, I had four brains, some people say I'm a bit of an alien, if, if I had more things that I could do in the world, I would be spending a lot of time in the hemp building industry. I think the hemp building industry, for me, is, is one of the greatest ideas that, that this industry offers for the world. And it's an idea that I, it's not easy to communicate. It's very challenging to communicate because hemp building, well, yeah. Sounds a good idea, great, I want hemp building. I go to a builder and they say, can I have hemp building? And they're like, no. Like, uh, we can look at it for you, and you have to pay for my time and pay for it, etc., etc. And you have to go through a very complicated process right now if you want to hit building. And why would you do that? Because the building, the first thing is going to say is, well, you know, it's going to be more expensive because I can buy these prefabricated walls and I can bring them up with a roof on, and it costs this much money. If you want to um, slight changes, it's going to cost this much more money. If you want something completely different that I don't understand and I have to learn, it's probably going to cost. Is much more money. And, and why? Because it's a good idea, because it's environmentally friendly. It's nice to think that we want people do things because of the environment, because they see of the dangers. My experience, at least in my culture, people like think like this, but they don't act like this. They'll go to the supermarket and they'll buy the cheap, cheapest option that they can, in, in general. Thankfully, maybe not in my town, where we, we spend a large amount of money on, on getting organic products were never possible. But it's not always possible. In the hemp buildings, for me, and um, we actually talk, we talked about this in, my, in the group that I was involved with in, in the success factors. Um, well, I know, I was talking about how do we change people's minds? And we have great ideas by like, like creating conferences like this where we communicate with people our ideas and what might happen. That, that's absolutely a great thing to do. Um, going on television and, and, and doing media. But then we, we recognize together that 
actually those things are not going to be listened to or heard unless the person communicating them or the idea that it comes from is actually real, is a real experience and a real truth of ourselves. So well, the, the summary was, you know, if we don't live it ourselves, how can we pretend to go forward? How can we teach someone something unless we do it ourselves? So if we're interested in healthy, organic foods or green products, then we need to put our money where, where our, our minds are. We have to buy organic and foods today. Every day do, do we buy from local companies whenever we can. That's absolutely a very important thing. First, it's a foundation. Because if you don't do that and you have ideas, and it's a good idea, I'm going to go and tell and make a business out of it, you might succeed, I'm not saying you won't. It won't make, I believe it won't make the power and the impact that we have the potential for today. Um, and in head building, that's something I have not yet done. I'm a bit of a, a gypsy mm -hmm. um, in the fact that I, I move, I've moved around a lot in my life. I've moved from country to country and I'm still moving around. Uh, even now, I, mean, I try not to. You know. <laughs> As my driver is laughing, we have been to six countries in the last well, in the last week. Most of those were done in three days, and we're going to another three or four countries in the next week as well. Um, but my aspirations is to actually stay on one piece of land, to be more connected with a piece of land and the trees around me. And right now, I'm more connected with you guys, and that's fantastic. Also, in terms of head building, I would love to see. Um, to, to, to share that vision of head building. And when I communicate that, what I'm going through my mind is, well, how, how, why haven't I done that myself? And that's very much what I'm interested in doing right now, and I hope to do with some people here, is to actually create a beautiful, beautiful, sexy, loving, hemp building. <laughs> No need to clap yet. We haven't done that yet. It's just an idea. You shouldn't believe me because I haven't done it. Um, but it, uh, you, you, know, you can take that from where you will. And I hope that you go and build yourself a hemp home. Now, why am I so keen on building myself a hemp home? Well, you can think it's because I, I mean, been involved with hemp for 18 years. Of course, he wants to build a hemp home. He's a hemp man, and hempster, and that's what he does. And yeah, honestly, you know, I. I just because I'm a hemp person doesn't mean I always choose hemp for something. I'll choose hemp because it's high quality. I'll choose hemp because it's the best product for the job. People talk about hemp having hundreds of thousands of uses, you know, and that's what I learned in, in Jack Herrera's first book, In Prowares No Clothes, which taught many of us in the industry. And honestly, most of that isn't true. It's true that you could produce all these things from hemp, but 100,000 years in, most of them don't make sense. Honestly, most of them don't have the success, have too many pitfalls, are not the right ideas, haven't got the network of people that will make these things happen. Um, but there are more than most plums. I mean, you know, you just bring a positive side to that, of course. There's far more uses for hemp than there are for most other resources. Hemp building is one of those resources. I'm doing a big plug for the hemp building industry now because it's something that's really passionate and alive in me because it's something that I feel needs the biggest push right now. Hemp foods are happening. Hemp medicines are happening. There is no stopping these things. Hemp textiles and, and uses for technical fibers, they are happening. Bioplastics, they're happening. We're not going to stop these uses. Hemp building, we also won't stop these uses, but I don't see enough of it happening still. And it's a really important thing because it involves a lot of growing a lot of hemp, you know, where you need quite a lot of material, a lot of biomass. And it's a relatively simple and cheap industry to start up. But it's, uh, it's been an industry that takes a lot of communication and understanding. So the house that I want to build, uh, and I want to build a really beautiful luxury house, and I want people to come and visit, and I want to open my house up to people to come and experience what it's like to be in a hemp home. Now, a hemp home, to me, one of the biggest selling points of a hemp home is the fact that it's breathable. And it's the biggest thing, by far, in fact, is that it's breathable. Now, again, that's a the theory and understanding, and I think so I'm going to do my best to explain what that means to you. But until you experience something, and it's the same with anything in life, 
from, from what I understand. So I can understand things intellectually in my mind, but until I've actually experienced something, it's not real for me. I can really know. It's someone else's opinion. You might have told me that hemp is good for something, and I might believe you, and you might be giving me get very good results, very good reasons to do that. And it doesn't stop me doing something and acting on that information, but do I really know that myself? The only, the only way you can really truly know something is by direct experience. And I have been very grateful to have built a small hemp building. It's quite small, it's a shed. It's um, you know, certainly not as big as this room, but it's a hemp building. Nonetheless, 100% hemp walls, 100% monolithic structure, and hemp line. And going in that building, when I first walked in that building, when I was completely completed, it was a long, long process to, to complete the, the building. I, I can't explain. It was an immediate feeling. I, I felt like I was still outside, and it wasn't because it was rustic or anything. Because we have a nice lime um, coat coatings on the outside. It looked like a normal home. You could, hemp homes don't have to look like a hippie home. Don't have to look like a straw bale home. We don't have to look like any. You can make them into any form that you like. It's a very mold and very adaptable material. Anyway, so it's not about the style. Everyone has different styles, of course, and, and it's, it's irrelevant the style they want to experience. You can just make pyramids from hemp, of course, as we've seen earlier. Um, but whatever shape or size the building is, when you go inside it and you feel how it feels to be in a breathable building, that's something else. For me, it really was an experience that I go, wow, I don't just want to build a hemp home. I am going to build a hemp home now. It, that's a goal and I, that I will create in my lifetime. Because I, I, I realized that we've been in rooms, in boxes, which is something, uh, I mean, it's pretty foreign, really, to us as human beings, to uh, any life form, really, is to live in, in permanent buildings, you know, that, that are really completely cut off from the rest of the world. In nature, most animals create caves or, or buildings, but they're connected with nature because they're usually in breathable structures. When we're breathing in the air, it's phenomenal. And instead, we are living in rooms that are, are plastic boxes. Now, you say, well, it's not plastic. It's made of concrete or clay or whatever, brick. Or, but it's plastic because there are plastic linings in most buildings. There are, there are insulations that are made from materials that stop the air movement. So they put in air conditioning units. And, and things to, to, to try and circulate the air and mimic what a breathable building is. And I promise you, it's nothing like, nothing like walking into a building that's breathing and you can feel the fresh, the vibrant air. You know, personally, you know, working in a room with no windows, I mean, it should be a crime. <laughs> it, it should be illegal. I mean, where's the natural sunlight? Where's the vitamin D? And I love breaks now because of that. We, we have to go into the sun, we have to be connected with it. I want, you know, we, we, we also have the knowledge now, and we have for many years, you know, of the sun, where the sun comes up and how it goes down. And we can choose the direction of our building to be solar passive, which is all fantastic, and bringing light into our rooms. And you mix that with a breathable house, and you have a house that stays the same temperature throughout the different seasons. So. Not, it's not one of my products, it's not something that I'm involved with already. Yeah. But it's, it's, a, it's a passion, it's an experience. It's just one of my experiences, and I, I thought I'd share that. I didn't have a particular type or idea for a talk today. Mm -hmm. So I thought, uh, just sharing what comes to me right now, and that is, let's it's, it's build him houses. Let's build him houses.
who were perfect, I don't believe would be here, who would be leaving. And I believe that's what we're all working towards as well. Um, let's, let's do the best we can. Every step of the way. Come on, let's do it. <laughs> He's talking about you. <laughs> you want to do it? Yeah. 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 I want to do it. You want to do it? Sign them up, Steve. I'll get with you, I'll be with you. I won't be with us. So, yeah, right now we produce um, hemp foods in, a, in an insulated building, more than breathable. <coughs> we pump cool, fresh air in our hemp um, food production facility. The way that the whole facility is temperature controlled. Um, we have cool rooms to store our product fresh. We have cooling in our machines. So when we're producing the products, they actually produce cold. We take the best certified organic raw hemp seeds that we can find. And we produce them in machines that we've designed from scratch, from, from nothing really, from ideas with engineers. Um, in our team, said, Do you want to do it this way? And we've worked our way through mistakes and making wrong decisions, and, but they're not wrong because they're learning us. That's how we've learned. Yeah, at the moment, you can't go into a, a machinery shop and say, Hey, I'll have a hemp CD hover, please. It doesn't exist. There's no protein mill designed specifically for hemp protein. Yeah, there's a lot of things that we've had to learn and, and work out ourselves over the years to produce what my vision is, the best quality. We also talked about that in the success factors, but to create the best quality products that we can for the world. And that's where originally why I, I said yesterday that I got involved with hemp food products because I saw products that weren't the ideal, other than ideal. And we've got to do our best in creating the best, the best that we can with the limited resources and the limited experiences that we are in this human body and this human mind that, that we sometimes attach ourselves to. I invite us all to, you know, to communicate and grow together and speak with each other and to share, you know, honestly, you know, what's happening for us. And you know, it's nice, great, usually we say, hi, what do you do? I do this, and, you know, and how do you do? Oh, I do this, but it's perfect. Yeah. But you know, there's also, you know, there's also pitfalls in that we do. Let's share our footfalls. Hey, how are you doing? Well, you know, I had a pretty shit week actually because uh, I thought this was working and I did this and I did that. Let's share our, ex our negative experiences too in a positive way because we get to learn from each other that way. And again, you know, a lot of it, you know, I also experienced that you know, people can say, don't do that, don't do that. And I'll still go and do it anyway because I needed to experience that. For sure, that happens also. And we can sometimes also learn from others' mistakes. And I think that's a really, really important attitude to take with each other, to, to be honest about the things that aren't working. And if you're not sure about something, wherever you're up to in your work, in your ideas, in your life, to ask the questions to you know, people around you. Because I personally believe that we attract the people in our lives that we're meant to be around. I believe that we create our own reality, really we do. Um, adjust by the way we think. So if we look around us, we'll find the answers to all of our solutions. It's all out there. We do, as the ultimate place we got to in our pitfall area, said there are no problems. There, there are only solutions. We can do anything. Anything truly is possible. So how, how is that? Well, you know, sometimes it can be overwhelming. Sometimes an idea can be, oh wow, that's a great idea, but I have to do that, and I have to do that, I have to do that, I have to do that, I have to do And it can get too much sometimes. And it's sometimes for me, you know, what I like to do is just remember my breath, I just come back to the breath. Breathe in and breathe out. And Where am I again? Oh, I'm here, that's right. Okay, what's in front of me? What's the next thing I, that I can do right now? And just take one step at a time. Sometimes one of those steps can be standing back and looking at the big vision and the big picture and the big possibilities. Absolutely, it can be. And, and really, 